Glad to have you back on the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Let's now take a look at the stories making the headlines on our newspapers, um, starting with The Nation. Uh, the headline says, Lagos, Rivers, ask court to stop VAT's revenue sharing. South governors back court action on tax. FIRS says, don't join Lagos. Ibiemi Olatunjibelu is Lasu VC. She's a second woman CEO. And also, resident doctors shun government proposals. We will wait for the court. Air Force probes accidental killing of nine in Yobe State. How we killed Senator's son sold his car for one million naira. Soldiers recover 11 rocket launchers from terrorists. Gunmen kill lawyer. The Gushans okay some Wolu's actions and VAT open grazing. Courts cases threaten PDP convention outcome. Bandits deceived us, says Matawale. And an Oku six end to sit at home order. All right now let's look at stories from the Punch newspapers this morning. It says federal government to spend four point nine billion dollars fresh loans on Kano um, Niger or Niger or Niger Republic rail line and others. It says railway will improve trade among Nigeria and Niger in North Africa, says Buhari. And Ambra Benwe Ogun, Taraba Farmers, others to benefit from $50 million loan. National Assembly uh, uh, speedy approval of Buhari's loan request worries and Dume. I felt dizzy in the villa. Back to work, EFCC chairman says. And uh, also Oyo Bauchi, Enugu governor's defection on the way, says Fanny Kayode on joining the APC. Still in the news, Yoruba nation agitators, uh, charlatans are extorting people, says Bankoli. And uh, cholera spreads to Abelkota, one dies, 17 hospitalized. We can also see in the punch this morning, 12 soldiers again killed and three gun trucks seized in Burno terror ambush. Uh, federal government woos local investors opens three billion dollars euro bond borrowing, and um, also firms. Oh, I think I'm going to skip that one. Southern governors back uh, state collection of value added tax. Lord anti grazing law progress. 186,000 Nigerian refugees in Niger and Chad says UNHCR, and Masab attacks by Jabia Miller uh, for calling secession agitators terrorists. Mm. On the leadership newspaper, Southern governors move to entrench fiscal federalism to use state assemblies, national members to pursue constitutional amendment, insist South must produce next president, support NGF's stance on PIA, state security outfits to collaborate for safety of region, appeal court refuses to stop FIRS from collecting VAT, Fani Kaede Shehusani join APC PDP. Lagosians back Songwolu on VAT, open grazing ban. 2022 budgets, reps oppose NNPC, more removal of fuel subsidy. EFCC responds um, saying Bawa, Hill and Herty. Police snap killers of Nala Son, kill notorious bandits. Manufacturers under pressure as Naira falls to 570 Naira to $8. A source says the CBN has no control over the parallel market. Those are the stories on the leadership. The Daily Independent coming up next. It says uh, Southern governors back states collection of value added tax, urge full deployment of regional security outfits. Okay, with states enactment of anti-open grazing laws. Namdekano drags Kenya to court over forced rendition. And why we backed out of dialogue with bandits, says Zamfara governor. Appeal court refuses to stop FIRS from VAT uh, collection, rejects Rivers Lagos application to appoint a receiver, and also NIN registration hits 63 million. Uh, PDP wishes Fanny Kayode well as he defects to the APC. Senator Shea Hussani defects to PDP, uh, eyes Kaduna Government House. Also this morning on the Daily Independent, Yoruba Nation agitators urge UN to rescue region from genocide. 
Um, so, uh, Senator Ndume berates National Assembly's speedy approval of Buhari's loan request. Jude Johnson, good morning once again. Thanks for joining us. Yes. And good morning, uh, Sarah, and good morning, Anita. It's good a morning. pleasure to be with you, and good morning to all, all our viewers all over the world. All right. Um, thank God it's Friday. I'm guessing you. Thank God it's Friday. Yes, I'm guessing you're going to kick off with the well, most uh, trending story in the country, Femi, Femi Fanny Kayode's uh, defection to the APC. Uh, quickly go ahead yes. with that one. That's good riddance to bad rubbish. I don't know why Prague got, got carried away with, with that. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, um, that shouldn't come to anybody as a surprise or as a news. Um, Femi Kayode has been having bromance with the governor of um, Sampara State. He's gone to virtually all the states controlled by the APC. Um, showing, becoming the unofficial spokesperson for those governors and the rest of it. And it's going back to APC, shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. It was in APC at inception when the party was initially formed before crossing over to PDP. Now it's back to APC. Like typical Nigerian politicians, they are chameleonic in their nature. They are just a jeep. They go any government in power. They have no character. They have no principle. They have no ideology. They, are, they, 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 they have no sense of shame and no sense of identity. They are, they are card identity. Every one of them, just look at them in terms of whether they have been in PDP before, they have been in APC and the rest of it. So they've been, um, they've been dilidying, jumping ship from one party to the other. And we have not seen the end of this uh, crisscrossing of, of party, cross-carpeting of party. We will still see it playing out as we approach 20 2023 elections, all what they care about is about how to butter their own bread. They don't care about Nigerians. It's, it's, it's about them. And so um, the, the kind of noise it generated, I, 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 didn't, I, I didn't know why it generated um, that kind of noise. Well, the fact that he's very, very active on social media platforms and is very, very active in terms of his involvement and engagement when it comes to political issue and considering what he has said in the past, I mean, I think he shouldn't even be given a better place. It's like a dog going back to his vomit because if you go to the social media space or you go to the media space and you listen to what he has said concerning why he would never go back to APC under his, uh, his debt and the rest of it. So, uh, what would you take? So, tomorrow, do not be surprised if this character leaves APC tomorrow and he comes to PDP again and it started to indict tribe at all the people that are in, in APC. And um, I did something which I posted on my on my, on my my handle and I asked that anybody should just look at that image, the image in which he appeared at, the, at Asso Rock. It's, it's, I'm sure the president must have been pressured to please welcome him because you could see that the, pres, the president has, has a clutch fist. That means he's not welcome if you look at that, um, that, particular, that particular image. Good for APC. That them, Femi Manika, they have crossed over to them. You will offer them nuisance value um, in trying to rubbish the opposition because he has been of nuisance value to the APC um, on, the, on behalf of the PDP. Now, when he, he, with him in APC, he'll be of nuisance value to the PDP. So it, 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 will, it will work out for him. And his principal actor that actually gave him in, a national recognition said something all you need to do is to give him food. And he will start talking. So mm. um, let's let's hope. Um, but it, what what is in there for Nigeria? All I just say is that they don't care about us. It just shows their character and their person. Good, good luck to him in APC. And good luck to the APC for having him in their in their fold. Okay. Um. Across the papers this morning is still the issue of VATs. It's on the uh, Punch newspaper. It's on the leadership. Um. The story is the headline on the Nation newspaper. Um, as well as the Daily Independent. It says, Lagos, Rivers, ask court to stop VAT revenue sh sharing formula. Um, but, but the big deal really is that the appeal court has issued a judgment that seems to throw this matter, um, you know, just into almost confusion. And we've seen people approach lawyers asking for more clarity as to what the court judgment means. And it, it, it then means that the appeal court is saying that, you know, states should continue to remit VAT to the federal government, you know, as things were before they began to take this matter to court until the issue is decided. So where do you think this leaves um, states with their um, seeming victory, you know, regarding fiscal federalism and generating IGR for themselves using VAT? 
I think um, this what we solve this problem will be a political solution at the end of the day. Um, sometimes that's why people have resort to alternative dispute resolution rather than going to court because um, sometimes the court creates um, some bottleneck and they create more confusion in solving the problem. This thing is very straightforward. It's clear the constitutional is right, uh, but we know what happens to the administration and dispensation of justice in Nigeria. The politicization of the process. The court, will, the issue we get to the Supreme Court, hopefully. And I hope the courts will be independent, will be fair, and will be just to address the normal thing. <laughs> However, I've said it over time, people don't look at the composition of our, of our judicial system. The federal government is made up of three organs. The three organs of government are the legislature, the executive, and the judiciary. The judiciary is a key component part of that of that of that organic structure in the sense that it's the arbiter that tries to establish what should be the rules and responsibility of the component unit of, of, of the federation, which is the local government, the state and and the federal. Now a situation whereby the composition of that court um, puts to question the integrity and the fairness of the court, that creates a problem. However, as as and from, from the look of things, I think um, courts don't usually resolve problems in most cases. Um, I think the political solution will be, will be what will come out of will come, will come out of it. And if we look at the issue, the issue are very, very straightforward. Mm. You can't generate consumption tax in Lagos and take that consumption tax to Kano. It's unfair. It's against the principle of fairness. And uh, I hope the Supreme Court will be bold, will be fair, so that we can have what is called a true federalism and not a unitary state. Mm -hmm. What we have in principle is we practice unitarism, but we, we claim to have a federal system of government. There's no federal system of government that operates the kind of structure which we have, and that structure needs to be reviewed and needs to be looked into. Let each state determine what they want. Kanu, for instance, you said we don't allow state policing, but you have ISBA police in Nigeria. ISBA, where is it written that there's a, there should be another police force in, the, in Nigeria. So you have these bad police that arrest goods and services that are produced in Nigeria. Nigeria is a secular state. Nigeria is not a religious state. So you have a contradiction and a contraption of, of, of principles and policies. And that's what you get when there's no clear identity of what you want for a nation. So as far as I'm concerned, I share the views of the state. And you could see that there's a reserve on, behalf, on, part, on part of the southern state governors. I hope their legislature will not go rogue. The, the, the legislature they've sent um, from, from their various state constituencies and federal constituencies to go to Abuja will be bold enough and do the needful. Because once they get to Abuja, I've told people, if you have, if you have related with the political class, you know, once they get to Abuja, there's no political party. There's no. The legislature, the House of Rep members don't have political party. The senators don't have political party. Once they get to Abuja, they become one party. And that party is our own interest, how we can further our honors, and how we can preserve our identity. Right. Have you ever seen, and I'm saying it, you can ask the viewers, have you ever seen any House of Rep members that went to Abuja, that returned even after he lost the election. They don't return back. They stay in Abuja and they look for other means. And then, <laughs> that, uh, that, 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 that is why they are comfortable with having their own political party in Abuja, representing their own interests, different from the political party they have here. So, political solution will be the solution to the problem because the way it's going into drag on, and um, um, if care is not taken, the outcome of this um, might not might not be acceptable to the federal government or might not be acceptable to the state. I think what we should do is to find this political solution. I agree in totality with the state. However, what the state are even saying, which go federal government should have done, is that this sharing formula is unfair. It's unfair. How will Kano generate 2.8 billion in June and you give 2.8 billion to Kano? Yet Lagos State and River State that generates over 70% of this VAT, right. and Johnson. even, yeah. Yeah, because of time, because we're, we're going to be wrapping up in a bit. So so let's, um, you know, quickly also get to get your thoughts on some of the things, you know, that are trending. Um, uh, one of the stories, I think it's on the Daily Independent, is uh, Senator Liu Ndume. Um, it berates the National Assembly's speedy approval of uh, the president's loan request. We're at 35 trillion and counting, and of course, looking like it will continue climbing. 
uh, with regards to um, our um, uh, debt uh, uh, as it stands. Um, so quickly share your thoughts on the, um, uh, the president with another $4.9 billion relate, relate, loan request. Relate, relate that to the free fall of the Naira. Relate that to what has happened to the economy. When you have a borrowing economy, an economy, he said the borrower is the servant to the lender. And we have seen how it has affected the value of Naira. We have seen how it has led to slack friction, uh, inflation in Nigeria, inflation plus stagnation. Um, we have seen how, um, then you relate that to, to what was said that the central bank does not have control over, because an economic story do, does not have control over, over the exchange rate. Uh, where, which country do you see in the world that operates a uh, parallel market in foreign exchange trading? Which country in the world do you see that they engage in? In selling, in selling currencies. So, when Dumai captured it, one of the greatest disservice to this nation is the election of the present leadership of the National Assembly. People were celebrating and they were jubilating. And some of us argue that for really, for democracy to really be strengthened and deepen, you need the opposition to control the National Assembly. You need the political class to fight. When they fight, they reach a consensus in order to meet the needs of, of, of the citizenry. How would the president come with, okay, we want to borrow, we want to borrow, we keep borrowing. Part of the story is that we borrow money to build railway line to, to, from, from, from Kanu to, 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 to Niji. Yet all our roads are terrible. I came back from Bauchi two weeks ago. Our roads are terrible. I travel from Bauchi to Gombe before taking a flight from Gombe to Lagos. The roads are terrible. You, I went to to Elysian on three days ago. The roads are terrible. So go anywhere in Nigeria, the roads are terrible. But we can borrow money to do railway from Kanu to to to, to, to Niji. We can borrow money to to, to, to to build the critical infrastructures that we have in Nigeria. Travel along Lagos Ibadu Expressway. God will help you. God will help you that one trailer will not fall and then you spend four, five hours. Anybody that wastes your time is wasting your life because our life is measured in time. Well, one thing that was mentioned is, uh, you know, that the uh, money would also be used to finance the um, Niger Republic uh, rail line. It says uh, it will spend uh, the $4.9 billion on Kano Niger Republic rail line. Um, is that one of the things that you might add to the infrastructure that we're benefiting from loans? Who is benefiting? Nigeria is benefiting from it. What benefit are we getting from that? If we want to do that, why don't they go to ECOWAS? They should go to ECOWAS. Let the ECOWAS country borrow money to build a rail network across the ECOWAS region. That will be better. Not an isolationist policy from Niger. What is the economic value of Niger to Nigeria? What is the comparative advantage do we have in trading with Niger? Overall, why are we borrowing money? Borrowing money for what? And we can't see what the significance of this money is. So, Indume coming out to to say something about it is a clear indication that the National Assembly, the Night Assembly, is just a rubber stamp assembly. Mm -hmm. It's just a rubber right. stamp assembly. Okay, so um, two stories I want you to um, react to. First of all, um, we saw the news of an Air Force raid in Yobe State on Wednesday when at least nine people were killed and so many others were injured. You know, they said that they were just getting ready to go to their farms and just, uh, just ahead, um, the Air Force uh, fighter jets began to shoot at them and they saw their people die. So the Air Force um, um, spokesman said that um, they had not received reports of the incidents. That was at, as at yesterday. What well, we're seeing on the, on the Nation newspaper now that the Air Force um, is now beginning a probe into the killing of nine. And also the story on uh, the Daily Independence that Namdi Kanu is, is dragging Kenya to courts over forced rendition. Yeah, he has a right to do that. And then um, I think that uh, the dad of Inam de Kanu, he has every right to do it. And then it's what happens to Kanu could happen to anybody. And um, I think that that's the forceful abduction. And what Kaya did, I think um, they will pay the consequences of it because he will, will establish his fundamental human, human right because there are procedure and process through which you can go to extradition, not just picking somebody uh, forcefully and then bringing the person, handing over the person to, to his own country 
them for that. So I support this, this argument. With respect to the Nigerian Air Force, the unfriendly, unfriendly fire killing Nigerians. And what's the value of an average Nigerian life? That's the question you ask. Um, and then you begin to wonder, are these Boko Haram terrorists at this spirit? Um, don't we have surveillance in, um, infrastructure or technology? Are, are these people living in the hair that we can't locate them? Uh, I, I keep referring to 2013 letter written by President Tulushe Bobasuda, and I ask anybody to go and read that letter. Just go over to the letter. It will be clear to you. In actual sense, just pay attention to page 8 and the last paragraph in page 8 that do fill into page 9. Then you see all our ambassador listed the implications of not dealing with the issue of Boko Haram and all other things that were tied to Boko Haram. But gun trafficking, uh, human trafficking, drug trafficking, and the rest of it that it's Boko Haram is beyond religious warfare, that there are a lot of things that are tied to it. And you begin to wonder that how can't we successfully and decisively curb this terrorist act that we have had cause? You know, there was a case where the Air Force bombed an IDP, IDP camp in Bono. So, but in Nigeria, there are no consequences for action. We we'll just hear the story on the pages of newspaper, and then after a while, the story will die, and life will go back as 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 as, as normal, and um, oh. it becomes business as usual again, and we return to it because none none of the military guys have been tried for genocide. The issue has not been taken to to work court by the communities. Those communities don't have spokesperson to take Nigerian government to court and ask for compensation and destruction of their lives and property. Jude uh, Johnson, do you think that, yeah. Jude Johnson are, are, are these really just, um, you know, slight evidence here and there of how, you know, we maybe don't even see that much value in the Nigerian life? One of the things that we will be talking about this morning um, in history on this day um, is death of more than 100 people um, after flooding in Nigeria. We moved on from that like it never happened. The bombing that you spoke about was in 2017, and there are reports about 150 people died in that Rand bombing. We moved on you know, like it never happened. It's repeated itself again uh, that we're speaking about this morning, and we simply have moved on. Um, one thing you know, that I would also mention is the 12 soldiers that were reportedly killed in Zamfara a few days ago by you know, bandits. It's in the news this morning that in Burno, another 12 soldiers have been, you know, killed. Three, I think, kidnapped and uh, gun, gun trucks were also taken. Um, and we seem to just be disconnected from these numbers and the death, you know, that is recorded every now and then. In three days, in three days' time, it will be one year of NSAS protest in Lagos. We moved on. The question I ask people is, just take a public bus in Lagos. Don't take Uber. Take a public bus in any part of Nigeria. Just take a public bus and look at the type of vehicles we use to commute, commuters, the state of those vehicles. And you see VIO, Federal Road Safety, not arresting those ones, and they will arrest private cars. And then you look at that. Can you use even those type of buses to carry animals? In Republic of Benin, and government will go on with that as if nothing happened. And I have asked this question: What is the value of an average Nigerian life? So that gives an indication of the government. If you look at the roads, they they will drive their. That's why they drive four wheel drives. They will go through the road bumps. They will go through the potholes and caterpillar holes, uh, and they do continuous business as usual. Go, I give you is a basic example. Ask anybody living in Mowe, Bafo, and the rest of them. Some of them have lost 10 years of their life just staying in that traffic. There's no value. And that's why you see, we have seen not only capital flight, we have seen human capital flight. Nigerians are leaving this country in droves. I sign reference letter. I can count the number of reference letter that I've signed for my students, for my students. I knew the number of my students, family and friends that have relocated to Canada, that have relocated to United Kingdom, that have relocated 
to other parts to Australia, I know loads of people. Because what's the value of it? And I said something to, to my friends and my colleague. This trend we witness now, I put under his administration. The trend we are witnessing in terms of human capital flight happened when Wali was the head of state in 1984. 84 or 85. That's when we did the campaign. Andrew, please don't check out. We have seen the cycle again, and the cycle is repeating itself. And it's here. Everything we have seen, there was a free fall of Naira then, there's a free fall of Naira now. People are, when I tell my son and my student that in 1984 we used to queue to buy essential commodities, they didn't believe it. You queue to buy it, to buy essential, me, and the rest. you queue, ask anybody, national supply company or what is, what's the name of the company? And the same cycle is repeating itself. But because we are short on human memory, as a result of that, we think it's we think it's fair. In the past, when people tend to put it on the government, oh, they will say oh, you are a PC member or you are PDB member. You've been paid. You've been do this. You something has been done to you. And we are all facing the consequences of our inaction and our insensitivity to draw the attention of both the legislature and the executive to the to their inadequacies and their, their failure to meet up with the needs the needs. The needs of, 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 of Nigeria. So I ask, what's the value? You have, you have, you have, you have asked, what's your value that will make a governor to use his siren to send you off the road? What's your value that will make even your legislator is going, he's late for his appointment, and he will use his siren and his police to send you away from the road? Can you do that in civilized time? Hmm. It's, it's, it's the, more, the, more, the more we grow in democracy, the more we grow in Nigeria, it, it seems as if the more civilized we, be, we have become. The more civilized we have become in terms of relating with respect for human life, respect for the dignity of, of, of human life. So let's, let's, we will move on with this. That's the reality. All right. okay. We will move on from this debt because when uh, 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 when um, What's the name of this American guy that died? When things happen outside Nigeria, Nigerian, Nigerian federal government is quick to, 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 to post a statement of condolence with other clients. But when it happens in Nigeria, you won't get any statement from the presidency. You won't get any statement from anybody. Hundred Nigerian died and nothing was said. Oh. And it took the Air Force almost 24 hours before they could ascertain that actually... What's their level of intelligence? Um, Gina Johnson, um, we, we can definitely continue this conversation um, because definitely talking about human lives, we need to continue to talk about this and let the government know that we do deserve you know, more from them, uh, being that we have elected them to represent us and, of course, serve our best interests. Um, thank you very much, Chief Lecturer at Nigerian Institute of Journalism, Gina Johnson, for coming on this morning. It's a pleasure to be with you, Aneta. And uh, Zarabi, make sure you enjoy yourself over this weekend. It's a really stressful week. You need to recalibrate. <laughs> and having, get yourself prepared for next having uh, vaccine reactions this morning, so I'm, I'm going to have a restful weekend. But uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you very much, Hello. anyway. Wish you, wish you a great weekend. And you too. Okay, so um, when we come back from this break, I'll be going back to the year 1983 to tell you about um, a story in history for the first black American winner of the Miss America pageant. Now we're talking about, you know, 100 lives that were lost in flooding here in Nigeria uh, just in 2018. We'll be back. <laughs>